Hi everyone, I'm Lily Reed and I'm a medical student at Stanford School of Medicine. And we'll talk about relationships in this video and how they can range from healthy to unhealthy and even to abusive. We are joined by Erica Villa from Next Door Solutions to Domestic Violence to talk with us about this. Thank you for having me for this important discussion. Given the sensitive nature of this topic, we recommend using the following additional safety steps if you might be at risk for intimate partner violence. Number one, find a safe and private space to listen. Number two, please use headphones to listen to this video. Number three, pull up another website on the latest news or some other random web page so that you can easily change tabs if anyone approaches you during this video viewing. Also, please remember that your internet history can be monitored, so please clear your browser history and your YouTube history after viewing this video. In the show notes below, there is a link to instructions and a link to a news website to escape to if needed. Let's have a quick chat before we move forward about some important disclaimers. While we talk a lot about COVID, this video series should not be used for personal medical advice. If you're worried about your own health, please talk to your doctor who knows you and your medical needs best. Also, we want to share two helpful numbers right at the start in case you feel you or anyone you know needs support. The National Domestic Violence Helpline, which you can call or chat live online, can provide support and resources to survivors of intimate partner violence, whether that may be you, family, or friends. We also want to make sure that everyone is aware of the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It has been a hard year and the lifeline is there to support you if you are in distress. So with that, let's get started. Tell us, Erica, what will we be learning about today? In this video, we're covering a very important topic, relationships. We'll discuss what makes healthy and unhealthy relationships. Let's start with a scenario. Imagine you are hanging out with your friend, whose name is Sarah, and the conversation turns to the topic of your relationships as it often does. Sarah recently moved in with her boyfriend, David. She tells you they were happy at the beginning of the relationship, which is why they felt like it made sense for them to move in together. However, soon after they moved in together, Sarah began to notice that David's behavior changed. Moving in together can definitely be stressful. Yes, and relationships can have ups and downs, but things seem more than a little stressful for Sarah and her boyfriend. David has gotten paranoid, accusing her of cheating, and has been telling Sarah that she can't talk to certain friends or family members. They've started getting into really heated arguments, even yelling at each other. Sarah has said she was scared once or twice that David might hit her, although he never did. That's definitely worse than a little stress. I'm starting to worry that Sarah might be in an unhealthy relationship. How do we tell healthy relationships apart from unhealthy ones? Healthy relationships are a source of love and mutual support. In a healthy relationship, each person respects the other person's body, emotions, thoughts, and boundaries. They support one another in achieving their goals and through tough times. There is open communication between partners and each partner is honest with the other. Relatedly, I would think that in healthy relationships, partners trust each other. Definitely. Healthy relationships are also based on equality. Each person gets an equal say in the relationship and neither is in charge of the other. A good way to evaluate whether a relationship is healthy is to think, does this relationship make me feel good about myself? In healthy relationships, the answer to this question is yes. Okay, now what about unhealthy relationships? Well, in a lot of ways, the features of unhealthy relationships are the opposite of the features of healthy ones. Okay, that makes sense. I would imagine that an unhealthy romantic partnership would lack equality. Partners may disrespect the other person's right to make choices about their own body or future. They may not value the other person's opinions, thoughts, or feelings. Some of the features of unhealthy relationships sound like they're really bad, maybe even abusive. What's an abusive relationship? Relationship abuse or intimate partner violence is defined as a pattern of behaviors used by one partner to maintain power and control over another partner in an intimate relationship. Intimate partner violence, like hitting or kicking the other person? 
There are many different types of intimate partner violence and physical violence is one of them. There are other forms of abuse such as sexual violence, emotional abuse, financial abuse, stalking and harassment. It also includes reproductive coercion and health related abuse. Some examples of physical violence include things like hitting, beating, kicking, pulling hair, or using a weapon against another person. Violence can also be sexual, like forcing, coercing, or manipulating another person to do sexual acts that they don't want to do. And it is still violence, even if the couple is married. And emotional violence. That's like yelling at another person or insulting them. Yes and can also include humiliating, intimidating, or threatening the other person. Some people who abuse threaten to keep the children away from their partner as a form of emotional abuse, or threaten to out their partners who are in a same-sex relationship to their family. I've also heard of financial abuse, like when one partner doesn't let the other one work, have money, or the resources they need. Yes, definitely. Stalking and harassment is another form of abuse. This includes spying, following them around, or refusing to leave when asked to. And sending unwanted emails, texts, or posts. There's also health-related violence, such as when one partner doesn't let the other get medications or appointments they need, or if they try to make reproductive decisions for you, also known as reproductive coercion. This can happen to both men and women. Wow, there are a lot of different ways that violence can show up in relationships. Unfortunately, yes. The ones we listed aren't even all the different types of violence. Right. And that brings us back to Sarah and David. Remember, David has been accusing Sarah of cheating and trying to isolate her from friends and family members. They've been arguing more, including yelling at each other, and Sarah has felt scared of physical violence. What do you think of the situation now that we've learned a bit more? To me, that sounds like abusive behavior. I agree with you. It sounds like David is demonstrating a pattern of abusive behavior meant to exert power and control over Sarah. For now, let's review what we have learned in this video. Yes, let's. We learned that healthy relationships are positive influences in our lives and are built with honesty, trust, and respect. Partners are equal, and they work to communicate well and support one another in achieving their goals. Right. And unhealthy relationship traits are almost the opposite of these things. Poor communication, disrespect, dishonesty, and inequality or attempting to control one another. We also learned about intimate partner violence and the many forms of abuse. What's common is that it is a pattern of behavior where one partner is trying to gain power and control over another. Hopefully with this information, we're empowered to prevent violence in our own lives and in our community. <laughs>